supporter. And let me tell you, Zambi, mm. uh, what the vast majority of the Zambian people mm. want to know, and the assurances that we have delivered in the manifesto, is that there will be job creation uh, spurred by rapid uh, industrialization program supported by rapid uh, economic growth. Where and, is the and, money going to come and, from? Where is the money going to come from? Thank you, Zach. And, and it's very simple. Yeah. It's very simple. Because we, we are highly and, indebted as a yes, nation. And, let me, and, and anyone who's going to tell us I'm going to put up yeah. an industry must, must, yeah. must, must tell us. Yes, sir. And let me get to that. Where the money will come from. Yes, sir. And let mm. me get to that. Mm. Um, there will be no money coming into this country if we do not resolve the issue of the public debt. The issue of the public debt is that we say that no is over, we know, we know. There will be no money coming in into this country. So the UPND, through that manifesto, we are telling the Zambian people, one of the things that we are going to get on as a matter of first priority mm. is resolving the debt crisis. And the strategy is very simple. Huh. Number one, uh, we need to restore credibility of government. The reason the, the current regime has had serious trouble and problems engaging with uh, critical multilateral institutions such as the IMF, including creditors, is because they have zero credibility. No one trusts them to sit on the same table and begin to discuss uh, modalities of resolving the debt crisis because Paco Balabari cannot are not in a crisis. So they cannot possibly have the credibility to begin solving a problem which they never knew was coming anyways. So credibility of government is important. Uh, number two, we are going to need to put a moratorium or a stop on commercial borrowing, Zach. Commercial borrowing like the euro bond is very expensive. It's very expensive. No wonder now the current regime has stopped servicing it. They can't afford it. It costs close to $200 million per month for them to service that debt. There was no way we were going to make those payments when our ability to generate revenue internally was much less $120 million. We're never going to do that. So we need to put a moratorium or a stop on commercial borrowing and leverage the support of multilateral institutions such as the IMF, the World Bank, and also bilateral, um, uh, bilateral support for critical sectors such as education, um, uh, you know, health, agriculture, and industrial development, and also skills development for, for young men and women across the 150 constituencies. Number two, the debt needs to be restructured, Zach. It needs to be restructured because, like I've told you, but in Dakai, who take over so who have a PF, their obligation was to pay around about two hundred million dollars per month in debt repayments in aggregate. By UPND, we are saying, once we restructure, we are aiming to be delivering a minimum or rather a maximum of fifty million dollars to our creditors across the board, and free up a minimum hundred and fifty million dollars to go into critical sectors of our economy, including industrialization, education, public health care, um, uh, and education. But a critical component of that strategy, Zach, is that we need to reschedule that debt. Because in Shta, Ishelko between Panwepo Tudi, Nepo Tringi Rokwe Shenkongole, Naichepa, we won't be able to do that. So we're going to need to negotiate for a bit more time to do that. That basically is the strategy for solving the debt crisis. So once you have resolved the debt crisis, now you need to win the war on corruption. Because if you don't win the war on corruption, number one, you'll not have a chance even to restructure your debt because you'll have zero credibility. Number two, you'll still continue leaking close to $3 billion um, uh, every year. you not have a chance of rebuilding this country. So we need to close the tap on corruption. This is why winning the, the, the fight against corruption is a fundamental component of that manifesto. Because of three of Zambia Kwebati, Ishinda la meshle ya matumba ya bandu. Mwuchifuro chako wa tishie mufpatala, tushite miti, tishie maskuru, tuingishe ama teachers in chito, nangu tushibu mfie, tulipide ama contractors, mchalo chesu, those who are delivering critical services to government, tishila mm. fi matumba ya bandu. So, we cannot make progress. The only way to make progress is make sure that, number one, we win that war against corruption and money is go. Um, um, uh, in, in, in areas and to places that are beneficial to the national interest. That's important. But also, this country, Zach, continues to lose another $3 billion to a combination of tax evasion and tax avoidance, both at the hands of foreign companies and also Zambian individuals. So you see, Abandu, Baleposa, I can be. 
ngamwabe pshatim pia shirefu makuisa ati yo shirefu makuma businesses ngamwabe wati business hisa but if you are nokso ndako that is money laundering so people are making money in this country but they are not able to justify where that money is coming but much more they are not able to demonstrate whether they are paying a fair share of taxes on those businesses and the money that those businesses are generating so once we create a tax system and improve tax compliance Zach, and how you how do you improve tax compliance you, you you build a tax system number one that is easy to comply with a tax system that is also predictable a tax system that is fair a tax system Zach, that gives you as a businessman an incentive to evade tax is a bad tax system we need a tax system that encourage encourages self tax assessment a self tax compliance that is important once we achieve that Zach, we are going to have another minimum 2.5 billion dollars chila mwaka going into the coffers of government so how do people ask and say where will the money come from because the UPN is demonstrating exactly where the money is coming from. Between the PF and, 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 and the UPND. But PF and the UPN, they don't have a plan. They are going to, to lower taxes. You ask them, are you going to do that? They can't tell you that. But if we UPND, we have a plan. When you ask me, you are going to lower taxes, how much are you going to raise? I will tell you that we are lower taxes in Zambia. Over an initial five-year period, we expect to inject a minimum $1.5 billion directly into the microeconomy. That is money Zach, directly into the pockets of Zambians. Can you imagine what that money will do? People will create small businesses, they will employ their brothers and sisters, or they will save money into banks, the banks will have a bit more money, interest rates will go down. The chain reaction is unstoppable. But what we have at the moment is government whose insatiable appetite for money is an ending. They even failed to account for it. The UPN is saying, if we will have no appetite to overtax the Zambian people, we want to give them latitude and, sp and, and space to spend on the things that matter most to them. Let them go and drink. The bars will employ more people. The people they employ, they will get paid. Once they get paid, they will go and feed their families. It's as simple as that. If, if the Zambian people want to go and spend their monies on holidays, happy days, let them do that. But what we want is the Zambian consumer to be given the ability and the space to be able to spend in this economy. At the moment, you can't spend because your taxes are too high. 67% of all your earnings goes in taxes. HLNGI for Muni Manifesto is we are very clear. We are lowering taxes. And we are lowering taxes. We've said the 37.5 upper tax uh, bracket, it's coming down to 22.5. It's very simple. Lower, lower tax, uh, I mean middle tax bracket, 10 to 15%. Uh, tax exempt, 4,000. Uh, because 3,300. It's, it's fair enough. But we're also saying, on your NAPSA, Zach, your NAPSA, you, Zach, the UPN is saying we are going to give you the choice. But periodically, you can draw a percentage of your NAPSA, uh, upon your NAPSA money so that you can raise money to build a small business. You can raise money to build your retirement home. At the moment, it is not possible for a contributor into NAPSA to build a retirement home once you reach the retirement age of 55 or 60, whatever it is. It's not possible. Because that's why if you option, you can use lamp sum. But if Miyako, the UPN is saying, we are bringing back that option because that's your money. We cannot have NAPSA having the money to invest into bogus investments belonging to friends of uh, those in government, but they do not have the money to pay you a lump sum. And they do not have the money to allow you partial access to your NAPSA contributions. And they do not have uh, the ability to create an unemployment benefit uh, scheme under NAPSA so that Mubazakile after three months, it should be possible for you to draw a small amount from NAPSA on a monthly basis so that your family can eat, so that your child can go to school. Those are the things that we're proposing in the manifesto, Zach. Those are the things that we're proposing. If what we read in uh, in one of the most recent Bloomberg publications is true, we have a reason to worry about NAPSA. 
Because I think we believe that they might be planning to use NAPSA money to fund the construction of the Batoka Gorge hydroelectric power plant. Because no one is going to give us money. No one. We have no credibility. So now, when you come back to the NAPSA, you have to go back to the you know, to touch the build Batoka in a joint venture with our colleagues uh, uh, in Zimbabwe. That's unacceptable. If those are indeed the plans, according to the publication that we read, 